it. She packed the top. I was just like in awe of everything. Like you just see the whole life cycle right there in your hands. I mean, you're looking at eggs and larvae and babies being born and they're all cute and weird looking and then like boys and hello the queen. Like there's just so much to be fascinated about. And like, I'm still learning constantly, but honestly it was just from that moment. I was like, okay, this is special. Love for Ola means to save, to heal, and to thrive. And we were thinking, oh, we're going to save all these bees and heal them. And we're not thriving farms and community. And then, like, then we start learning that really the bees are the ones saving us. And oh, my. Kalisi here. I'm happy today to be calling in with two amazing beautiful Wahine. Um, what's really amazing is that uh, they have a lot in common. They're both moms and they have two kids and they're both around the same age. So uh, let's just get started there um, with the most important things in our lives, which are our children. <laughs> and I know that we have this in common where we know we've chosen the farm life as the way to um, raise our children. But I wanted to ask you, um, you know, how's it been uh, being in quarantine with uh, these, with kids and also, you know, just raising them alongside your bees? I guess for us, life in quarantine isn't too different than normal farm life, except for that we haven't been able to go to our weekly farmer's market. Um, so that definitely has a huge impact on us, but the kids are actually kind of happy about it because every day is an adventure, I guess, on what project we're going to get done on the farm or with the bees. Today we're harvesting honey, um, but it's it's definitely a tricky balance. Any days, not just quarantine days, I guess, between motherhood and business and bees and farming and trying to figure out how to split your energy or split my energy and attention I guess to all those things and make sure I'm still doing an okay job. A little job. bit more different from us because normally Roman is in preschool um, so he would go to school from like 8 30 to 4 30 every day before all of this happened and so that was like our cram up all the work get it done um, and now he's home all the time so it's a blessing in disguise because he loves being home and so he always says I don't want to go back to school I just want to stay home with you. Um, but at the same time, it just means our attention is divided even more so. So it's a lot of it's like time blocking, like, okay, let's do like homework for 30 minutes and then you get the iPad for an hour or something. And we really just like try to cram out as much as we can or we're tag teaming and being like, I'll take the morning if you take the afternoon with my husband, um, that kind of thing. So it definitely is stretching us and we're lacking our alone time, but at the same time, it's a really special time to be forced to be together. You know, you really take that for granted before. Like, we're so hard on ourselves. You know, we always try to hold ourselves to these sort of higher standards of like mm -hmm. super moms and um, and yeah, like like you said, Kylin, I've, I've just ended up saying to myself, as long as I get one thing accomplished today, then just be happy with that. Yeah, so uh, so how, how do they enjoy, how do the kids enjoy um, being around these? Do you like to be around the Nalini? What's your favorite thing? <laughs> yeah, he loves catching swarms with us. He's like, when we have to go look at bee removal jobs, that's the big, mm -hmm. big part of our, um, I guess, that's our, that's our favorite thing, I guess, and our passion. So we're always going to look at bees in people's houses and things and he's always is it a swarm though because he only wants to come <laughs> on the swarm because those are the fun ones for him and the That's last awesome. he did he actually cut the branch and shook him in the box all by himself almost yeah wow yeah, so was, good bud it's amazing yeah. but do you like what do you like about the Malaman? he's gotten stung a couple of times um, oh. drones Oh, and drones, of oh, course. Drones. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you can tell us a bit about um, how you got into um, beekeeping? To rescue hives that were in unwanted places and then move them out here to North Pohala to pollinate on the farms. Because the other part of it was we were seeing like my father-in-law's farm. He had tons of avocado trees and other um, plants in his orchard that just weren't getting any fruit. So. We also saw a great need for pollinators, and I think Marina, that's the same 
you can jump in if you like, like on your guys' farm. Um, yeah, totally. So that's the reason my in-laws started was they were noticing their vegetable crops were not yielding what they used to. Um, and it was the same time, 2008, 2007, when that whole bee crisis happened, where all of a sudden everything is getting wiped out. It's when the varroa mite was introduced to the islands. Um, so it's definitely correlated there. And so they just reached out to UH and got one hive and one hive grew up to five and grew to 250 over the years. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then before that, before they got the hive, he was literally hand pollinating just because it wasn't getting what he needed. So bees play a huge role. Now we don't have any issues. <laughs> we have tons of produce. Awesome. And I'm sure your neighbors are happy too with all your mm -hmm. food. Totally. I mean, if you think about it, like we're central in the valley, so technically we could be pollinating the entire crater, which is really cool. Awesome. Yeah, so for us, we kind of just started off rescuing hives and um, placing them throughout Kohala to pollinate the farms. And then, you know, with so many hives, you start getting all this abundance of honey eventually because you don't so want to. What's been the ch most challenging aspect of being, you know, running this business and other businesses and, you know, um, ventures and, your, and being a mom? For me, it's where do you spend your time? There's so many things pulling you different directions. So it's like, you just really have to decide, is today gonna to be a farm day or is today gonna to be a computer day? And how do you prioritize that? Because if you let it, I mean, the farm will consume you 100% and you'll never be home. <laughs> so it's really just setting boundaries, I think, and deciding like, okay, these back end things need to happen. The bees can wait for a little bit, you know, and then I can work on this. And definitely like it ebbs and flows throughout the year. We were saying earlier, if we can get one thing done, that's a win, <laughs> you know, like right now with the kids. Um, but really just time batching. So like we can say Tuesday, Thursday is our bee day and then the rest of the week, we're just gonna kind of play by ear with what's needed. I mean, that's really the biggest challenge, but also the only way to make it work just because everybody needs us all the time. So, yeah. yeah. We schedule yeah. in like um, off days because that's where we're having hard time is there's never enough time to have downtime. So we're constantly going and then we burn ourselves out and then we're like, hey, we need to like, we have to make it a point to go do something together or, you know, I don't know. We're learning still. Totally. And there's no such thing as work-life balance. Everyone's no. like, oh, work-life balance. There's no such thing. <laughs> so it's like, what is balance to you? You know, I guess, what is your priorities as a family? Um, but for me, like, I can feel just internally when I'm getting to that burnout stage. So I'm like, okay, today's a beach day. Like, just drop everything. It can wait. We're going to the beach, you know, or whatever. Um, my husband, not so much. Like, he'll definitely be on QuickBooks all night long. And I'm like, honey, like, let's just watch TV. Like, it's okay. <laughs> so I just have to be the one, I guess, in our family, I'm the one that's like, we need a break. Like, we need quality time. Let's not talk about work for two hours, you know. But we're not scheduling it. It's just, I feel it coming. <laughs> yeah. I think that's another one, too, is like, when you're in it together, it's hard to, like, not talk about work stuff or not talk about movies because that's your life and that's you know like so it's yeah. definitely yeah i mean i hear you <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know anything about <laughs> taking care of bees and i would love to it seems like so romantic you know like it's such a romantic thing to do like i'm going to have so my not feet. romantic <laughs> Right, 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 right. It's so sweaty and sweaty. I'm getting stung. Like, oh, I don't know okay. I like at our baby, <laughs> at our oldest baby shower, their dad got one right here in the eye, like the day before. So he had a swollen black eye for the, oh, the baby man. shower. He told everybody I punched him in the face. Now, <laughs> not romantic at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, those like jars of honey at the end, just like they're beautiful, you know, um, the display. We're all here harvesting and it's not fun and it's sticky and like sweaty and it's not like, oh, beautiful, let me bathe in it. I'm like, oh my God, let me take the power because everything is sticky. <laughs> we should take like a stinky, sweaty selfie after we're done and be like, this is real life. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's not the hair done, trust me. No, but your hair does look really cute. <laughs> um, well, okay, I'll try not to be discouraged by that. But for anybody like myself who knows nothing about beekeeping um, and who wants to try it, uh, what would be the first, you know, piece of, of advice that you would give? 
researched. I mean, there's so much free content out there. Like YouTube is amazing. Make sure that people have actually done their due diligence. Um, it's a big responsibility. It's not just something you buy and test it out, you know? So I love the beekeeper's Bible. Do you have that one? That one's um, a great one. Honestly, yeah. it's like everything you could want to know, but then obviously for video, it's just YouTube. Um, Cause there's a difference between reading it in a book and putting it into practice. So I like to see how other people handle their bees and um, full hive is a really educational one too. If you sign up for their newsletters, they'll send you like weekly information about bees and bee keeping, which is good. Awesome. And even when you prepare and learn, the bees will always surprise you. Like totally. Like, oh, we, once you clip the queen, they'll never leave her. We've had hives we were rescuing. We got the queen in the box. All the bees come out of the box and go fly <laughs> off and on a fence post, mm -hmm. and they leave their queen in the box. And we're like, yep. They'll always do so. a lifelong learning journey. Like we were mentored from a guy who's done it his whole life and he was in his forties. Um, and he still was like, what the heck is happening sometimes? <laughs> you know? Like you'll never know it all, which is the fun part. It's crazy to think people that have done this their whole life and they don't know like yeah. how amazing and mysterious and romantic these bees are now. <laughs> Such a glamorous job. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the best and happy Mother's Day. And thanks for happy Mother's Day. Day. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.